Welcome back to my channel for a short Canon episode. And I haven't talked about Canon gear for a while on my channel, so I thought it's time to make a video about that brand. And uh, what I want to show in this video is the following. I used to shoot the Canon EOS R5 and with a firmware update, this camera got pixel shift multi-shot for getting much, much higher resolutions. And uh, it came in the usual way as we see it with Sony, Canon, Fuji and other brands, Leica of course, in the SL3S for instance. And uh, then Canon brought the EOS R5 Mark II. And everyone was expecting this feature of course is preserved to the Mark II from the Mark I. But no, Canon ditched it. And instead of pixel shift multi-shot, they included an in-camera upscaling feature which can be applied to JPEGs and HEIF images, not to RAW files. And all of that triggered a very emotional discussion among Canon enthusiasts. And in this video, I want to quickly look into this feature, the in-camera upscaling. I will give you a demonstration. I will shoot again an Omega Speedmaster watch, which I used already in a recent video about the new Sony RX1R Mark III plus the Leica L Pro 52 for better magnification. And I will go in detail quickly through the settings. We'll show you two sample images, one which is in camera upscaled and the same image which is not upscaled. And then also comparing with the raw image, of course, and coming to conclusions whether this is a useful feature. So let's kick this off. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do so, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share my videos, like them, and in this way support my nerdy work in my nerdy photo studio. Many thanks for that. All right, so what means image upscaling? It means that an image with a resolution of X gets upscaled to a higher resolution. And uh, before the age of artificial intelligence, this could also easily be done, for instance, in Photoshop, in other software, post-processing software, but of course not with that capabilities as we have it today in the age of AI. And uh, I use software from time to time. It's called Gigapixel AI. And if I have lower resolution images, which I have from many years back and people still want me to process them for a printing, I can try to get them into a larger print dimension by using Gigapixel AI. And uh, there are also algorithms in Photoshop. There is the super resolution now in the Adobe software. There are a lot of options you can use and they are all based on artificial intelligence. Now Canon has this menu entry here and you go into the play section here, you see the blue play symbol and then you have a menu entry which is called in-camera upscaling. I'm going to demonstrate this in a moment when we shoot this Omega Speedmaster watch. And Canon actually claims that their in-camera upscaling of JPEG images is so well trained on tons of data by artificial intelligence algorithms that it is really good and can, that's what they think, compete with pixel shift multi-shot where you actually combine really new data by let's say for instance a stacking of 16 frames and each frame is half a pixel or a pixel shifted. That means you combine really new information coming in 60 different forms into one single frame which then of course has a much higher resolution. Here if you upscale images no real new information is added but based on today's AI algorithms which are very clever, very smart, it can nevertheless produce astonishing results. And why Canon did this? I'm not really clear about, I'm not sure about, because they follow here a completely different route than all the other brands. If you think about Nikon, they have pixel shift multi-shot. Sony has it. Fuji has it, for instance, in the GFX100 Mark II. And uh, Leica has it in the SL3S and so on. They all base their multi-shot algorithms on combining frames where based on in-body image stabilization, the sensor is shifted by half a pixel or a pixel in different directions. And then you get eight frames or 16 frames with always a little bit of new information, which you stack together into a common image. Very often actually with software, which you have on your computer, only Leica actually does these type of algorithms in camera and already gives you out of camera a fully enhanced in terms of resolution frame. 
So much regarding my introduction to the topic. What I want to do now is I want to shoot this watch. I have mounted currently the absolutely brilliant 100 millimeter macro lens from Canon. And uh, I will do the in-camera upscaling. I will have an image which is upscaled, the same image which is not upscaled. And I will also run it through Gigapixel AI, which is the software on my MacBook Pro. And then we look into the results. Since I do not want to mix and blend this with focus stacking, I have fairly well stopped down the aperture to an f22. The whole aperture range here of this macro lens goes to f32. So I hope that we don't see a lot of distortion by diffraction, but I don't think so. I will shoot at the base ISO of the EOS R5 Mark II, which is an ISO of 100, and I'm in fully manual mode. I currently dialed in an eight second exposure. And uh, what I also set up here in the menu, let me show you. If we go here to the camera section, I will shoot raw and large JPEGs. And by the way, on the JPEG quality, if you look here, I have set up the highest quality here, which is 10 out of 10. And uh, that should give me hopefully good results. So let's take that shot. I will use a self timer and probably I should change that self timer to a shorter moment. Let me go here to uh, two seconds, then you don't have to wait so long. So listen to the big beep. We have now to wait a few seconds for that longer exposure. All right, let's go into play. Let's have a look and uh, let's crop in. That looks actually pretty good. Look at that quality. I think actually this 100 millimeter Canon lens is so good that it's worthwhile to purchase a camera for the lens which I think is a little bit of an absurd statement, but I really mean it. It's such a good macro lens. And I, by the way, have a fully fledged video on that lens on my channel. I will post the link down below in the info box so you can look this up. Now we go into play mode. So we go here, uh, we use that dial to go into the blue play section here. And now we choose in camera upscaling. Let's choose it. And now I can select an image. I formatted the compact flash card before, so I have only one image. I put again the set button. This gets checkboxed here. And then you see if I'm okay, I should press the Q button, which I'm going to do right now. And now I can save this as a new file. Let's do it. And then the camera does its voodoo and its magic. And I'm really curious how this plays out and uh, if this really is a meaningful in-camera processing tool we can use for high resolution. Here we go. Processing completed, continue image processing, no and uh, select the image to display. Let's go to the processed image. Let's see if there's something we see. And if we crop now in, well, we see kind of the same clarity and sharpness as before. I think we really need Lightroom in order to find out whether this is really an AI-based smart upscaling where you don't see actually that it is upscaled and also how it compares with Gigapixel AI or if it is just quote unquote an upscaling. Here's the first pair of images I want to compare. On the left-hand side is the native JPEG out of camera. I didn't really play here with any post-processing. It's 44.8 megapixel. And on the right-hand side is the JPEG in camera upscaled to 179 megapixel. And let's compare these images first. So left-hand side, native JPEG in camera. Right-hand side, JPEG in camera upscaled to 179 megapixel. And uh, I also played with different shooting parameters here. You see, this is now a 15 second exposure at F25, ISO 100, base ISO. And it's the 100 millimeter macro lens, which I showed in the video, of course. And now if I crop in here by 100%, let's do this first here at the Omega logo. And we compare the left and the right hand side. I actually prefer the low resolution image on the left hand side. Look at that. This is not upscaled in a way that it is impressing me. And uh, it's okay-ish, but I think I could achieve the same in Photoshop, maybe even better uh, with super resolution, what have you. That doesn't look particularly convincing to me. Also here, look at this part here. You clearly see artifacts from upscaling. And uh, we, let's also go here. I don't think this is breathtaking image quality. It's probably usable and maybe if you do post-processing and I apply a little bit of Lightroom magic here, I can make these images much better. But my purpose, of course, is showing you the images as they come out of camera because afterwards you can always apply a lot of post-processing voodoo and settings here in order to get this better. Let's look at the Saturn V rocket here. 
also here in the upscaled version, not really impressive. I think my bottom line here is if I compare native JPEG with in-camera, Canon's in-camera algorithm upscaled image, I really prefer the native resolution. The next very natural pair I want to compare is the native RAW file out of camera, which you see on the left-hand side, again, 44.8 megapixel. And then the upscaled RAW image, we are Gigapixel AI, which I mentioned earlier in the video, 279 megapixel. And let's have a look here now. Let's look into the same places. This looks, in my opinion, much better, much better. Let's look here at this part. It's more natural in the way it's upscaled. It doesn't really look like an upscaled image. My opinion, much better result. Uh, let's look here. Also here, this looks way off better, but I will just in a moment place the 279 megapixel images side by side so we get the full picture here. This looks really better than what we had before in the in-camera upscaling. Also here on the Saturn V rocket looks much better. So I think here I would conclude this is a reasonable upscaling which doesn't ruin the image and here I'm not so sure do I prefer the native resolution of the raw file on the left hand side or would I also be able to live with the right hand side which is Gigapixel AI upscaled. I think actually it looks good. It looks much better, much more reasonable, less artificially upscaled and uh, more natural to me. All right, here now we have the 279 megapixel files. On the left-hand side is the JPEG, which was upscaled in camera. On the right-hand side is the Gigapixel AI upscaled image based on the raw file. And uh, let's crop in here to the same places. And yeah, I mean, I don't have to say a lot here, right? The Gigapixel AI upscaling is much better. Look at the capital letter O here on the left-hand side compared to the right-hand side. Gigapixel is doing a much better job scaling this up. Look here, I mean, on the left-hand side, you clearly see this is a resolution which not naturally belongs to that image. On the right-hand side, it looks natural. Let's further look into other places here. Let's maybe go here. Also here, I think on the left-hand side, much worse than on the right-hand side. And uh, let's go here maybe. Again, same thing, you know, on the left-hand side, the in-camera upscaled image by Canon's algorithm is just a little bit wishy-washy. It's not convincing. It does not look sharp. It's not good from a contrast perspective. Look at that here. Gigapixel AI is such an interesting software. As I said, I use it from time to time and I'm always astonished by the results and of what this is capable. Look at that left-hand side, much worse. We don't even have to discuss. Let's have one last look at the Saturn V rocket. And yeah, I don't think I need many words to rank these images. Clearly the winner here is the right-hand side, which is Gigapixel AI upscaled raw file compared to the in-camera upscaled JPEG on the left-hand side. All right, let me conclude the video very quickly because it's very clear what we've seen here with our naked eyes, right? First of all, coming back to Pixel Shift Multishot, which is included on the predecessor, the Canon EOS R5. This will be in any case superior with one exception. It will be superior because it throws in much more information into the final frame. If you base your higher resolution on a single frame only, you basically have no new information. And uh, that is of course totally different in Pixel Shift Multishot where you have eight or 16 frames slightly shifted by half a pixel or by a full pixel. And in this way you have really new information which enriches the final frame to a much higher resolution. The exception where this is not superior and the big disadvantage is of course, if you have moving subjects in the scene. Only a couple of brands manage to calculate to some extent movement artifacts out of the finally stacked image. And that is the big disadvantage you have if you want to use pixel shift multi shot. It needs to be on a tripod. You should not have moving subjects in the scene. And uh, this way you are limited in the applicability of pixel shift multi shot. And that basically applies to all camera brands I'm aware of. Now, coming back to upscaling. You should actually, if you have an EOS R5 Mark II, not use that in-camera upscaling. Because first of all, it applies only to JPEG images. So you throw away a lot of richness of information you actually have captured with this wonderful camera. And you saw it here in my examples, you know, the raw file 
and then upscaled into Gigapixel AI is just delivering a much better result than the in-camera upscaled JPEG. It is always superior in post-processing to work with RAW. And then if you really need more resolution, upscale it with software, but based on the full information you have captured in the RAW file. And here again on the left-hand side, JPEG only and then in-camera upscaled is really nothing you should use. I really want to work with RAW files and that's what I do all the time in my workflow and my shooting. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel. There's always more to come. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and healthy. And of course, peace out.